What are the biggest practical or ethical barriers to making state-of-the-art myeloma treatment globally accessible for all patients? Um, I would say access to care and affordability. Um, the access is is hard. I think it's it's very hard, especially out in the community where um, we don't realize some of the uh, barriers um, that are existing. It's not just you know, just the financial barriers. It, it's the the mental capacity. We are in a, I think in this this time that we're living in is very, very stressful. Um, and really looking at all of the implications that it has had, not just on the patients, but even on um, the financial institutions, the hospitals. Um, people are losing their 304B uh, statuses and not being able to take care and provide for, uh, for these patients. You know, Last question, with all of the new advancements and all of the new um, research coming out, how are doctors keeping up with all of this? And and what is that process like of deciding if you're going to try a new regimen or if you're going to incorporate something into your, you know, standard approach to treatment or even diagnosis? So it is hard. It is hard um, trying to keep up with the new uh, data and I and I think that's where specialists come into play too. And so you know, as a specialist, you're really um, keen on just learning this one specific topic. Um, but there is lots of different um, groups. So going to Ash, um, going to Ash is American Society of Hematology, or your ASCO events, and you're learning about the newest data, um, having your uh, resources as far as talking to your colleagues, talking to pharmaceutical companies. I think people are still um, shy away, shying away from oh, seeing a pharmaceutical rep, but they are a lot of times the first um, step to actually learning about a new medication. And so I, I am still a big proponent of uh, learning and and not being afraid to to talk to the reps about new drugs and 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 learning about how to. What's the next step? And so if um, you don't know anything about it, that's the, the only way to really learn about things. Um, I think in the private practice world, you're still very limited on how much time that you have um, to take care of patients. And so you don't, you don't have time to read or look at new literature or look at your new journals. And so just making sure that you have different opportunities to learn. Well, this has been an amazing conversation, Dr. Roselle. Thank you so much for joining us on MD Newsline.